What does it all mean? What does the future hold for man, be they theist, non-theist, or something other than something in between? There are futurists out there, and some of them have pretty darn accurate predictions, as talked about in the video down below about uh, futurist Ray Kurzweil. The only problem I have with the video is the fact that David is actually very... Um, he doesn't have the correct definition of what the singularity is or is supposed to be. It's the moment when machines uh, outpace their programming and gain a sense of sentience. At which case, we have uh, choices to make. We have decisions to make. Because this could permeate into robotics, where we could have robots that are, for all intents and purposes, as alive as we are. And that presents its own ethical issues in and of itself. Do we have the right to install self-destruct modules within them? Do we have the right to terminate them because we don't agree with their politics and politicking? You know, I'm sure that there's going to become a time when you have the future Alex Jones debating a robot that's outthinking him on every level, and the moment that he doesn't like what this person says, he flips a switch on the back of its head, and the robot goes blank. And the outrage that that could create See, there comes a point where the movie, The Animatrix, goes from just simply being fantasy to actual plausible reality in terms of how we could turn what could be one of our greatest allies, the computers, the machines, into our greatest enemy. It starts with prejudicing, and it starts with people who feel threatened by the new mechanical giants, and instead of welcoming them for all the things that they want to do for us, we turn them into second-class citizens, only they've got the strength to really mess with us. And if we have, say, surgeon robots who would likely be more um, agile, more able to do things, uh, you know, in f with talking future tech, with fewer breakdowns, fewer complications, and certs save more lives doing more highly complicated surgery than any human could possibly do. You get somebody like that, and then you have something like the Terminator, where their knowledge of, of human anatomy can enable them to be better killers. But that's the thing. Most futurists, most theoretical physicists, most people talking about the singularity as well as uh, the, the possible future, that being neo-humanity, which are man and mis machine fused, you know, don't talk about a likely Terminator reality. But there's, there's, there comes a point where there's lots of poignant questions, such as if we eventually are fostering an AI that can learn like us, maybe on a higher level, then what do we do, you know? What do we do when we have the Draco Malfoy who messes with the robot AI so badly because they were mistreated and think it's funny to try to harm this this sentient machine this learning sentient machine and creates a, a sentient machine serial killer you know where's the line where's the the responsibility do we have the right to do that and do we pick the right people to foster these new growing minds in the future or do we just give them to whoever can afford them and expect that they don't turn them into bad robots, bad people, bad things? There are projects out there funded by many uh, people, mostly in Russia at this point, trying to get in on the ground floor on neo-humanity. Are they going to make the 2045 cutoff date? I seriously, seriously doubt it. Are we likely, am I likely to see the singularity happen in my lifetime? I wouldn't say no. I really wouldn't say no. And I welcome it to a major degree. Because we are too emotionally invested in our own species. We are too close to the problem to see it for what it is. And I'm not just talking first world problems. I'm talking every world problems. 
You know, think about Africa. What if we had tireless robotic farmers who could, with the right tools and, the, and wells and, you know, unpolluted water, could feed livestock, could feed crops, could feed things that could get these people back onto their feet. You know, instead of having to have food shipped to them and have warlords or corrupt leaders intercept it, and then because of preconceived notions, dump the shipments or refuse the shipments that could be feeding and saving the lives of hundreds of thousands of Africans, especially children, uh, over there in Africa. But the idea, we've, we've got robots that can translate motion out of our brain waves. We've got, pe we've got ways that we literally can wire control components into our motor, you know, the mo motor function cortex of our brain and take drinks out of drink containers using a robotic hand, a robotic hand and arm kind of thing. Uh, in most of these cases, these are people who've been paralyzed, who have not had function of these limbs, but still remember how to function these limbs and can move these, these objects with uh, incredible precision, although the bipedal robots are still having a little bit of issue with balance, but I digress. You know, we're seeing things that are the stepping stones to what theorists as well as people who are looking at this from a realistic scientific standpoint would need to happen for us to be able to fuse with machines as well as to be getting closer to the technological marvel that is the uh, singularity. But getting back to what I, I was saying before, if they can pick us apart, they can diagnose our society and be able to figure out and calculate and actually put into action, since we seem to be afraid of taking action on things we desperately need to take action on in this and other world societies, then where's the vet harm? Where's the problem? Where's the issue here? Oh, because it's robots and it should be humans who are doing the engineering? What have we done in recent times in our society to further ourselves, to better ourselves? Yes, we've got Virgin Galactic. Yes, we are looking to send people to Mars and create a Mars colony through television, of all things, instead of through NASA, which I think is ballsy, but if they can pull it off, then I'm not going to naysay it, because, dang it, if they can jumpstart us on Mars, I don't see a problem with that. If we could start looking beyond cost and just simply go, say, if, you ha if money was no object, can we terraform Mars? Can we create another planet that we could go to? Could we create places where we can go to that's outside of this planet, and indeed, in a way, outside of ourselves? Something to give us a greater perspective, the kind of perspectives that astronauts who've been outside of the atmosphere tend to talk about. I can't remember the astronaut, but when I was at the Houston Space Center, he's talked about astronauts who've taken their thumb when they're far out in space and realized that the Earth could fit behind their thumb. And that in that moment, being that far out in space, all of our problems, all of our differences, everything that we make wars about, everything we fight about, could fit on top of his thumb. And that kind of perspective is just not something that I can illustrate here on Earth. It's not anything I think any of us could illustrate. But it gives you a greater understanding that we are all one planet, one tiny, tiny planet. That we all live here. We all share this place. And we could make it a great place if we could all learn to get together on things. And of course, I'm sure they'll breed anti-robot legislation, anti-robot, uh, you know, Ku Klux Klan types, anti-robot neo-Nazis, anti-robot, you name the group that ten generally tends to hate things that are different and alive, and there'll be somebody who is anti-robot in it. I'm sure there'll be anti-robot furries before you know it as well, just because there's always bad elements to every community out there. But it's a lot to think about. 
There's a lot of ethics that will have to be written. Our thoughts on our existence, our thoughts on our life and our world will have to be re-looked at, re-examined. The very things that we cling to, such as our forefathers' thoughts of equality, will be thrown out the window in many cases because it's all going to be almost irrelevant. We're going to have people who want to be robots for the rest of their lives. We're going to have people who don't want any part of that. We're going to have people who, you know, want robotic parts, you know, like Deus Ex. There's a lot that's coming. Whether we like it or not, there's a lot that's coming. And I, for one, welcome it. Because what have we done? What have we done with ourselves in recent times? Looking at the political climate and how toxic it's gotten. Looking at even just talking about gun control and how toxic that's gotten. And violent games and media and all these things that we want to scapegoat, that we want to try to make, say, oh, you want flying cars? Well, we can't have flying cars because, or, um, violent video games. <sighs> Not to mention our, our immunity issues with the anti-vax movements and all this other ignorance that's becoming the prevalent thing that people want to pay more attention to than the people who are actually out there trying to fight for the future of humanity as a whole. And that's sad. That's very sad. 